Hello everyone, Reefer Gill here. In this video, I wanted to do an update video on my sump area. The sump area is basically the heart of the operation. This is where most of us would keep our equipment out of sight and out of mind and just be able to enjoy the aquarium as you see it here with the least amount of equipment exposed. I'll be going over some of the equipment that I have, the maintenance of some of the equipment, and the overall operation of the sump area. Alright, first I wanted to go over the stand itself. The stand itself was probably one of my single biggest mistakes I made in purchasing. When I went out looking for a stand, I just wanted a stand that was open in the back and um, had two front doors. So when I went to my LFS and purchased a stand, it was available. I also wanted it in black. They had the black one. And he mentioned to me when I was buying it, just be aware that these doors are small. It didn't click with me, I didn't respond to it, but now that I've been running in this for a while, these doors are way too small. Um, what's the big deal? Well, you see that the sump is off to the left there, and that's because it's really awkward down there when you have two small doors. You see the, the amount of space that I have on either side of the door and up above and even down below. A lot of the better stands that you see will actually be the entire side here, the front side will be one half of the door and then the other entire side would be the second half of the door. So when you would open it, it would open the entire area. In addition, most of these stands will allow you to remove the doors for even uh, better and easier access. So I wanted to go over the stand itself, also the height of the stand, it's probably a standard sized um, height, but I wish I would have gone taller and I wish, I really wish I would have had larger doors so I can get in there and work a lot easier and have the sump centered to the uh, bottom of the tank. But I have what I have and um, I'm learning to work with it. The sump that I have is a 25 gallon ProFlex Model 3 sump very happy with it the only thing I can say negatively about it is that the third stage here where all the equipment is at is pretty tight um, once all the equipment was in there it got pretty tight uh, I have a reef octopus skimmer the uh, model 110 you can see all the gunk that it's been uh, sucking out and I empty this thing out about once every three days but it's dark brown dark greenish gunk that it just uh, sucking out very happy with the reef octopus 110 I also have a mag 7 return pump in the back the return plumbing itself is going to be redone you can see here uh, where the plumbing is behind the skimmer goes up there's a 90 degree elbow then yet another 90 degree elbow back to back and then it goes up into this the display tank so what I'm going to do is redo that and place a hose on there with a check valve. The check valve on here, you can see right here, it's a George Fisher check valve. Uh, the check valve did fail me. Uh, I turned off the pumps to work on the system and the check valve that's in here did not drop down to prevent the water from the display tank coming in. So fortunately I was home, it did spill over a little bit I had maybe an eighth of an inch of water or a little puddle in there when I caught it so it was not a major disaster but it taught me a good lesson that these check valves cannot be trusted uh, as a second measure I made sure my return plumbing in this display tank was all the way to the top of the surface of the water as close as possible so that if that check valve did fail me I would only get uh, minor flooding versus a whole disaster. Going back to the reef octopus I do have it in 8 inches of water so the depth of the water to the skimmer is 8 inches which is what I found gives me the best results. This is my GFO reactor I purchased it from Bulk Reef Supply it's their deluxe reactor. The GFO basically what it does is it polishes off the water from any nitrates and phosphates that can cause algae blooms. So when I start seeing an uh, unusual amount of diatom or algae on the glass, it's usually time to change out this GFO. 
It lasts about two to three months, um, but I would not run my system without this. I also run media bags that are in high flow areas. This bag here has rocks point zero eight um, carbon, if I can get it out. Just a media bag with the carbon inside of it and placed in a high flow area. And then I have a second media bag that's a little bit smaller. If you look through the cracks there, you can see some white. Those are my filter socks. I have one of the media bags inside the filter sock. This is a media that I run in my system. This is the GFO that was inside the reactor I showed you. It's a regular GFO that I purchased from Bulk Resupply. This is the ROX 0.8 carbon that I use in my carbon socks that I showed you or media bags I should say and this is also GFO but it's high capacity GFO phosphate reducer I ran both the high capacity and then I tried out the regular GFO I didn't notice a difference in it clearing up the allergy or diatom blooms any faster than the regular GFO so I think I'm gonna stick with the regular GFO I'd like to hear what kind of media you guys are running to combat nitrates and phosphates silicate whatever other uh, nutri nutrients are in the system. Uh, I like to see what other options are out there and perhaps I'll try them out as well to see what is the best fit for my system. But right now I'm sticking with the bulk resupply GFO and the ROX 0.8. The second stage of the sump or the middle stage of the sump in here is where I keep my refugium. The refugium is lit 24-7 by this Marineland LED light which does a trick in keeping this Chetomorpha nice and healthy. It's tripled in size since I first purchased it. The Chetomorpha is a great addition to the refugium because it eats up uh, nutrients in the water that can cause uh, nuisance algae blooms and it also provides a good habitat for copepods and amphipods and other beneficial critters uh, that thrive in your system. The bottom is Miracle Mud I've never run a refusion before so I don't know how to compare it with uh, regular sand. I'm happy with it so far. The refusion also have some live rock and you can see my heaters in there. You could also see some red developing here and on a couple other spots of the refusion way in the back there. I'm thinking it's the beginnings of some red slime so I'll keep an eye on that and adjust uh, my system as needed to combat the red slime which can take a little while to uh, get rid of from my understanding I've never had it but I'm pretty sure that's the start of some red slime also it looks like I have some red slime up over that gate there along with some uh, purple coralline allergy some additional pieces of equipment that I have in the sump area is this emergency float switch if the water rises too high, that float switch is going to activate. It's going to send a signal to my SL1 of my reef keeper. And my reef keeper is then going to shut off power to my skimmer because if the water starts overflowing, this collection cup is going to overflow and, and spill over. And it will also send a signal to my auto top off, which is this black box back here. It's a tsunami auto top off. And that will prevent water from uh, topping off through this hose here. I also have two uh, dosing pumps, one for alkalinity, one for calcium. Those dosing pumps pump the alkalinity and calcium through these two hoses here um, and these two black uh, stiff hoses that go into the sump area. The sump also contains my controller for my MP40. It also contains a controller for the wave maker which controls the two pumps. It contains the two Reef Keeper Light power strips that are up on top and a third standard power strip at the bottom. I have a fan right above the water in the sump of the third stage in the event that the water gets too warm. The Reef Keeper will detect that and automatically turn the power of the fan on at a certain temperature. And then I also have this uh, light strip back here for the uh, stand in addition to the light that's for the refugium.
Really quick, I wanted to touch on power strip placement. I think it's really important to mention this because it is one of the safety hazards of owning a saltwater aquarium is the planning and placement of your power strips and power supplies. So when you're planning this stuff out, just ensure that the stuff is out of the way of water to prevent or at least minimize the potential disaster to your system or even worse, to your entire home. Okay, I finally went ahead and finished up the return plumbing. I went ahead and put this nylon hose in. You can see it running all the way up to the bulkhead into the display tank and it's connected directly to the mag 7 down there. Unfortunately I was not able to place the check valve back into the system because I needed threaded fittings and I didn't have, I didn't have the threaded adapters for those fittings so what I'm going to do is eventually just put the check valve back in in the future. I'm not too concerned about it because uh, the return plumbing that goes into the display tank that causes a siphon effect I've placed that as close as practical to the surface of the water. I've run a blackout test, power outage test, and the water barely comes to halfway up the sump. So just having that check valve is just an extra piece of security. I can tell you that once I connected the hose and turned on the power, the amount of pressure that was coming out of the return plumbing in the display tank was very noticeable. So hopefully now I'll have a better um, flow rate of return because I'm pumping more water into the display tank um, as a result. I had to even uh, readjust the Herbie Method uh, style plumbing because uh, I was getting water coming out of the emergency overflow because too much water was getting pumped into the display tank and so by setting that valve then I was able to adjust um, to allow more water to flow down the main overflow. But that'll conclude the video. Um, if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Otherwise, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks.